Alright, today I'm going to be reading creepypastas, and, um, stupid ones at that. And if you don't know what a creepypasta is, it's basically just, like, a short story on the internet, um, just kind of rumors that are thrown around the internet about, like, creepy stuff, um, some more famous notable ones are, like, uh, Jeff the Killer, um, Ben Drowned, um, and then there's tons of Pokemon ones, like, a lot of them have to do with video games. But, um, today I'm just going to read some that are really low rated, like, you know, like 2.5, like a 3.5 on creepypasta.com. So, uh, here we go. Um, I've actually read the lowest rated one before, it's called The Town of Blanche. And it's a pretty short one, so I'm going to read that real quick. If you visit France's Côte des Or in your lifetime, do everything you can to avoid a small town called Blanche. I was in the country once with my parents around eight years ago. I was 12 at that time. We were on a family vacation, and we found ourselves looking for a place to get some rest and enjoy some of that local color. We were really getting hungry on the road, so it was with some luck that a town unmarked on our map rose unexpectedly on the horizon. This was the town of Blanche. Immediately after we entered Blanche, we noticed that the colors of the houses were darker than anything I had seen in my entire life. It's not like they were black or gray, they were normal colors for walls, they just look not right. It's hard to explain, almost like it was a color that we don't even have a word for because it's so dark and strange. A few minutes after driving around the town, we all began to notice the fishy stench like a Friday market, except for the fact that no fish were being sold. The people in the town also had a really weird skin tone, almost frostbitten and tinged a deep blue, if I recall correctly. My father said something like, these guys sure look like the sea. We had originally planned to stay in the town for a while, but my mother and my sister were so disturbed by the creepy atmosphere and the town's denizens that they insisted that we keep driving and find a different town to stay the night. Okay, sorry about that. My sister interrupted me. So, when we arrived in the next town, it was like we all gave a gigantic sigh of relief at once. We felt that we were back in normal civilization. However, the people who ran the inn that we stayed at in the second town did tell us some very freaky stories about Blanche. Stories that made us really glad that we didn't stay there. And that's how it ends. So basically it's just, they went through a town, some stuff was weird, and then that, that they don't even stay there. So I, that's why it's the lowest rated one. It's just it's a piece of shit. Okay, I think I found one that's even worse. It's, it's the next lowest rated one. It's called The Mummified Head. It's only like, okay, here, here, it's like two sentences. In a cave somewhere is a severed mummified head. If you remove your own head and replace it with the severed mummified one, you will be imbued with immeasurable arcane power. The end. Yeah. Alright, next story is called The Day Everything Clicked. The great geniuses throughout history had once had one startling thing in common. They all went through a day where everything clicked. Everything seemed to make sense, and everything they did from that day on was perfect. This is a very rare phenomenon but cherish it if it happens to you. There is an opposite side to this coin, however, where one day, one will have a day that is so devoid of feeling, so depraved, that every day from that point on, they will be slowly deteriorating into a physical manifestation of pure insanity. If you start to have one of these days, kill yourself uh, Im immediately, for after 24 hours, you won't be able to die. You'll just ruin the world getting worse and worse. Yep. Alright. Alright, this is the next one. Your life is a movie. There's a movie theater in downtown Phoenix, Arizona that only plays movies from 1987. If you pay for three tickets and buy a large popcorn, they will play a film that shows you your future. If you watch the entire film completely, you will have sleeping problems for the rest of your life. The end. Alright, the post office. 
In the panhandle of Oklahoma, along the interstate, there is a lone brick building marked Post Office Number 56, and is marked with tape at the door as closed. The building has no doors and looks like a small box of bricks from a distance. The door is always locked and will never budge no matter how hard you try. Every July 7th, if you are positioned to the west of the building with the door opposite of where you stand, your nose will begin to bleed. If you drink some of the blood, one of your teeth will fall out. Take the... Take the tooth. Okay, it says take the took. Take the took and go to the door. The tape will no longer be there, and the building will have one small eye shape, small eye shaped window. If you go to the window and place the tooth in it, the door will click open. Do not look in the window. Never look in the window. When you open the door, a slow, salty breeze will blow out, and the entire room will be pitch black. Enter the room and shut the door. You will wait 10 minutes to 40 minutes, depending on the last time you saw your parents. Okay. After the time is up, a single shrill scream will sound. If you flinch, you will wake up in your bed sweating. If, if you don't flinch, close your eyes quickly and start running. You, you, will, you will run for about four to seven minutes, depending on how fast, how fast you are. Then, then you will hit a wall. Do not open your eyes. The ground will feel warm, and your eyelids will see the color, will see the color red. Do, do not open your eyes. Just feel around until you find a ring on the floor. The ring will be cold as ice. Pull on the ring and a trap door will open. Enter the trap door. After doing this, you will fall through the roof of an office tile in a building in downtown Tulsa, in a, in a bathroom stall. In the toilet will be a wallet and a gold ring. Take the gold ring. Do not touch the wallet. The uh, Alright, um, this next one is, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name, I'll just put it up on the screen. Um, there is a demon of great evil that will be able to walk upon the earth if someone is told of its, of its existence and does not repeat the name to another. To the best of my ability, his name roughly approximates, okay, Jikwizkizliya. This was told to me by a rather unkempt man on the street. If you have not noticed it already, I just told it to you. Um, okay, so... There's... Fucking never mind. Okay, uh, last one, I guess. This one is called Haunted. Um, and it was actually posted on October 31st, 2010, so Halloween. Okay. It's your first night in your new apartment. Your stuff is still in boxes. Your furniture, with the exception of the mattress on the floor, hasn't arrived yet. The utilities won't be turned on until the next day, so you're making do without. A flashlight and some candles will do for light until you go to sleep. Despite the creepy feeling of being in a dark, empty apartment all alone, you chalk it up to nervousness and try to get some sleep. A sound wakes you up. You lay there for a moment waiting to decide if it was real or just your imagination being too loud. When the sound happens again, you check your cell for the last time. Two in the morning. You get up, using your cell phone for light, and make your way towards the kitchen, the apparent source of the noises. At first you think somebody has broken into your apartment, but you choke down your reaction as you stare at the figure. It's a middle-aged man, wearing what amounted to striped pajamas, He's standing in front of the microwave with his back to you. Although seemingly solid, you can also see through his body. You're paralyzed, mostly out of fear, but partly out of curiosity. Yeah. Um, hey, you finally managed to say. The man looks in your direction, turning slowly. Your eyes open wide as you realize the man has no lower jaw, letting his tongue hang free. Your vision loses focus and the apparition disappears. A sound wakes you up. Oh, shit. Um, it's your phone vibrating against the floor. It's morning, or at least light is coming in through the window. You're back on your mattress, and the missed call is from your mother. You're confused about the night before, and still shaking from the experience of what you saw. Was it a dream, or did you really see a ghost? Yep. Well, I guess that's enough stupid creepypastas for a day. Um... See ya.